Hey beautifuls, so a question that a couple of women asked me recently, um, which essentially was how to jailbreak yourself when you, uh, from like negative mind chatter, um, or kind of getting away, carried away with judgment or self-judgment, or the negative spiraling mindset, uh, when you're in that contraction and that spiraling and that negativity, or just really kind of consumed in the middle of an argument or in kind of an intense moment in life. Um, like, how do you how do you get out of that? Um, and so I guess I just also want to clarify that I am not uh, I'm not a fan of uh, what some people call spiritual bypass, uh, ignoring a problem so that you don't feel the feels. Um, and so what I'm speaking about today has is uh, is not that, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I do believe that um, any time there are, are tingles or the shadow is arising, um, that dealing with it in a patient and empathetic and um, a self-loving way um, will actually train your body and your mind to more easily be able to access those states of love and empathy um, of self and others. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about today as well. So not only is that the result of what I'm about to talk about, but that is also part of the practice. Um, because anytime we want to manifest something or create something, whether it's something tangible like a workshop or, um, or something that's more of an internal experience like a relationship, um, or uh, a certain mindset. Uh, we want to manifest, we want to kind of uh, visualize and create that um, in, from the state that we're wanting to experience when we have that thing. So when we have that beautiful um, equanimity in the relationship or when we are, uh, have come away of having led the most beautiful connected workshop that feeling is what we're wanting to start with um, and kind of uh, like train our nervous system and our endocrine system and our neuro pathways to experience even as we're working towards that goal or that vision or that creation. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the science of, um, of changing your physiology, right? Because overwhelm and contraction and stress the body produces chemicals of stress and adrenaline and cortisol and um, these chemicals are like battery acid in our systems, um, especially for women, for men too, but like for women to run stress hormones on an ongoing uh, basis is like incredibly damages, damaging to our tissues. And I'm speaking of like autoimmune disorders, uh, viral infections uh, that are chronic and don't quite go away. Um, cancer, um, and uh, things like inflammation or acidity like ulcers and arthritis even. Um, so these ways that our body literally starts to attack itself because we're running on uh, these chemicals that our bodies weren't designed to run all the time. So that is one physiological state, the stress state. Um, and before I talk about the pleasure state or the expansive state, I want to talk a little bit about science. So um, when there have been studies where people like are hooked up to you know have their brains monitored and when they think of the math problem two plus two equals four different parts of the brain light up there's the part of the brain that thinks about two two and four the part of the brain that processes numbers and the other part of the brain that processes more abstract uh, ideas such as um, times and equals. So two times two equals four is lighting up those two different parts of the brain. And when we're kids, or if you were an adult and you never learned uh, math, um, those parts of the brain light up kind of one after another. Like there's a little bit of lag as your brain is trying to literally make the connection. But as a uh, as an adult, if you've done math and you've uh, then that basic math, the two parts of the brain light up almost simultaneously because the connection has been made. Two times two equals four. It's just almost instantaneous. 
So that is a representation of any association your brain makes. So I can take an expansive experience of pleasure or love or empathy and I can pair it with an experience in my life that I'm wanting more empathy or pleasure um, or love around. So I can actually start to pair my experience of this thing that might be challenging or creating stress or drama or contraction and I can engage in pleasure practices and start to open myself to associate um, my pleasure parts of my brain um, and also my parts of my brain that are processing this particular experience um, that's causing the contraction in the first place. So I can kind of start to associate the two. Um, the interesting thing about engaging in pleasure practices is that they're also very tonifying, kind of, it's like another word for cleansing, um, and um, clarifying in that when I am in my joy and my pleasure and my bliss, like truly, not because I'm trying to think myself there, but I'm in a, a playful, almost childlike state of pleasure and bliss, maybe I'm going for a hike, or I'm dancing with ecstasy, or I'm having a, a beautiful sexual experience, um, that ex those expansive states of my mind, um, often I become more aware of uh, relationships or circumstances in my life that I need to weed away. Um, and so it is possible to make uh, positive connections um, by using pleasure and lighting up the pleasure parts of the brain and also engaging in a relationship or the creation of uh, a, a upcoming workshop or uh, anything else where there might be a little bit of like stress or worry or uh, angst around and I, I can absolutely kind of infuse those imaginings, those thoughts, those experiences with pleasure so that the pleasure part of my brain actually lights up as I'm engaging in those um, relationships uh, and circumstances. And at the same time, it is good to realize that just by choosing pleasure and choosing to engage to kind of elevate my energy by engaging in pleasure in the first place may have me become more uh, aware of what is actually aligned and what is actually good for me and what is actually healthy for me. Um, so engaging in pleasure can also just be very clarifying. So I have a lot more to say about the science uh, of pleasure and the brain and the endocrine system. That's just one very simple, um, that's one very simple uh, example. But essentially when you, uh, it's a little bit like meditation like practicing meditation allows that meditative state of mind to become more readily available so that when you do get in a car accident or something happens in the relationship, something happens that's stressful, it's not pulling you out of your center, but you're able to engage in those tools of meditation and, and kind of be in that more calm centered mindset at will. And the same thing happens with, you know, the negative spiraling mindset um, and kind of getting carried away with judgment of self or others. Those are just states of mind. And with practice, uh, engaging in self-care, engaging in pleasure, engage, engaging in things like meditation, whether that's through dance or yoga or actually sitting in meditation or maybe it's journaling or gratitude uh, diary. Uh, you can train your mind to be in a more spacious, expansive uh, state as kind of the natural state. So when you go into those judgments or you go into that spiraling negativity, you're able to pull yourself back into your center much more easily. And it's all about those neural pathways and training your brain to uh, actually choose pleasure and choose alignment and choose uh, being grounded and centered. So anyway, I hope this is a helpful little uh, tidbit for you to chew on. I will continue to post videos of actual practices and rituals that you can do uh, that draw you more deeply into your center. Um, and I look forward to staying connected with you and hearing from you too. 
So if you haven't yet, you can hit the subscribe button below so that you'll um, more easily be able to see uh, my upcoming videos and uh, looking forward to staying connected. Thank you.